Hi, good afternoon. My name is Fawn, and I would like to show you how to paint a dove with a palette knife, using palette knives. Uh, I did the beginning with a brush, so you can have that ready to go. You can see what supplies to use, uh, links, things like that down below. Hope you'll hit the like button or subscribe or both. Uh, glad you could join me. All right, so what I did is I used a, a quite a large flat brush and uh, lots and lots of paint and filled all that in uh, added white little bits of pink and little bits of yellow the pink makes a nice buffer between the blue um, and yellow the blue and yellow will turn green so i added a little pink lots of white and blended that in of course you can do this all solid you can add clouds you can uh, paint whatever colors you would like there in your background and make it your own um, also, I drew a dove, and I used a reference, a couple of references from the internet because I don't have any photographs that I've personally taken of doves in flight. Um, normally, I use my own photographs whenever possible. When not, I draw. Uh, I draw combinations. I change it. I don't copy it. I exactly want it to be original. I want it to be my art. So... Let me show you what I did. I did two. Actually, I think I loaded down three or four, but two that I liked the most. And I used uh, the wings of one, the head of another, the tail of another, and I came up with my own drawing. Let me put these back up here. Um, I just like to have something to refer to as I go in case I kind of um, get confused or need a reminder of something I forgot to add. Um, so I drew it. I got the wrong piece of paper here. I drew it in simple shapes on paper first. Um, I use cardstock because I can cut it out easier when I'm done. Um, so I drew... Uh, like an oval for the body. Birds have small heads and big bodies, most of them. And uh, kind of a, a half a moon shape, a crescent moon shape for the wings. Little flare for the tail. Um, put the eye a little lower than you think. So you're just drawing in simple shapes and uh, just get it close because as you paint all oh, that changes you add the paint over it. it but it just helps you have a guide or something to refer back to the other thing is you don't put it straight in the middle most people would do that I like to offset things move it around uh, and then draw around it trace around it I use chalk you can use a pencil very lightly with a pencil kind of hard to cover some of your pencil lines sometimes with the paint it'll show through okay so I think that's good I think we're ready to get started. I have way too many colors out. Um, I just kind of keep this going and add to it for other projects. So we're going to mostly use uh, purples, pinks, and white. And, uh, and of course the palette knives. And lots of towels. You can use old rags, you can use paper towels, but you will need quite a bit of towels. Okay. I'm just going to start with white and slop it on there nice and thick. And while it's still wet, I'm going to take a little glue and kind of smear it white again and it just blends right on the canvas and that's what you want so if I get too much blue yeah no worries so the head's getting a little big so the body will get a little bigger I want to try to keep the head smaller and the body bigger I want just a hint of pink uh, red and white, lots of white, a little bit of red. Just think that will look nice. Lots 
to light again. I'm holding the knife very flat, parallel, parallel to the canvas, not, uh, not tipped. If you tip it, you scrape away. You may not want to scrape away. Back to that little bit of paint, I think I'm going to add a touch of orange to the beak. And now I want to take purple and make an eye. Now the eye is usually lower than most people put it. So make it a little bit lower, not way high at the top of the head. Okay. See, that's not too bad. I kind of like that. So keep going. I didn't put in my drawing every feather because I know when I paint it, I'm going to do that. So I want to just pull, pull down. So that feather and that feather. Trying not to touch too hard, trying to stay flat. There's usually three right here together. And again, I'm going to put blue. Ooh, too much blue. Back to my white. Okay. My feathers are getting fatter and fatter. That's okay. If I want them longer, I can make them a little longer. Now this part's a little easier. Just kind of sticking there. A little more white later. I'll come back and brighten some of those up. They don't have to all be bright right now. There's a little feather that hangs out kind of like a thumb, it looks like. I know, it's kind of a weird. But a um, little flight feather, I think it is. Turning my hand the other way. Now my bees are going to come down this way. And we just want to watch the angle. And see how it slowly changes as it goes around. And again, that touch of pink, I think, is nice in there. Yeah, I think this one. The pinks and purples will, uh, the pinks and blues, the light pinks and light blues will make a um, kind of a purplish lavender color as you go, as they overmix, they overlap and they mix on the canvas. Sorry, right, my hand's getting in the way. I will need to turn this canvas over to get the rest of these feathers. Now, the eye can be pink, it can be blue, it can be black. I just chose purple because it's nice and dark. In most of the pictures, the eyes look um, black to me. So here we go. These are nice little... rough edges. I'm trying for rough edges. Rough edges. I don't want a perfectly smooth rounded edge. Just want to be careful for my direction. Make sure they're changing a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. That way wraps around. Oops, sorry. <laughs> pull upside down there. And I'm just going to pull a little bit here. Not good. Just dropped my knife. Water. Okay. I like that. A few spots there I'm not really happy with. I'm going to pull on them. Just pull a little bit. I like the thick paint. I like the direction of the lines. That's the most important part. Okay, 
same idea, continue down. A little bit of blue, lots of white. A little more blue. Not a mess, not happy with that. So lots more white. That's pretty cool. And back to that direction. Let me flip it again. I want this to again turn as I go. So find the center. And that one will go kind of that way. And then I want to each one of these a little more. Lots of thick paint, mostly white, a little bit of blue. The blue will take over, eat up. Darker colors eat up the lighter colors. So it takes more of your lighter colors. And just a hint of pink. Again, I like that pinkish tone. I think I want to put it right in there. And I will come back and brighten it later if I need to. It's kind of pretty. We need some little legs in there, but first I want to get that other wing in there. That's going to be a little harder. My hand doesn't turn that way as easily sometimes, so that's where flipping the canvas helps. Start with that longest feather and then pull down. Again, there's three usually that kind of separate right here. Now, if need be, you can take a little tiny brush later too and fix things that are not quite the right shape or need a little extra attention. Probably the shape of the head will need a little correcting and the little legs might go in with a brush instead of the knife. Um, just makes it a little easier on you. Okay, so back to a little bit of blue. A little bit of blue, get my direction of my lines. Remember they go more even with the body as it comes closer. I'm just trying to show you, exag I'm exaggerating this to show you the direction of those lines. So now when I add the white, should be just a little easier keep it in the correct direction. Directional lines are important. Again, a hint of pink somewhere in there. Just has a nice color to it to me. One thing I love about palette knife paintings is they're a little bit abstract. So you can go really crazy on your colors if you want. Um, you don't have to do gray and black and white and brown. You can do pink, purple, pretty colors. <laughs> My husband says, those are definitely fawn colors. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, that's what I like. There we go. Nice direction. That looks cool. Now I can finish this out a little easier. My hand will go that way or not. Little feather sticks up there. And quite often I let some of my uh, background colors show through, but this time I'm trying not to because I like the change. This is a 
phthalo blue with white, and this is ultramarine blue with white. So it gives it a, a little bit different look. So I almost put this in my lap, but then I thought, oh, you won't be able to see it. If you remember to hold it where you can see it. Okay. I'm going to leave that for now. I like it. I like what I have. I like the thick paint texture. I want some little legs to come in there. So I have a really, really tiny brush. You can hardly see the tip. It's a 18 aught. And then I have a one or a zero. I think it's a zero. So I'll probably use the zero. And back to that pink. Try to use a lot of the same colors. I'm using cadmium red and white for my pink. And I'm going to give myself a little water on the brush. And a little curve, curve, curve. And then again, curve, curve. Now that one picked up a bunch of paint to have to clean the brush. Wipe it off on a towel. Pull. I pull when I clean the brush to get a better tip. I pull in the paint, pull the brush, and twist a little bit. I'll show you that. Instead of going in the pile and getting a clump that's hard to work with, I pull away and twist a little bit. And then I get a nicer tip. It's a little harder. Sometimes you have to let it dry to get that to show up. All right, I like that. I'm not sure about that beak, but I'm going to leave it. But the, the head definitely needs just a little more shape right here. And I just noticed that in my in my references. There was uh, a little better shape to the top of the head, especially this one. I liked the head in this one. just a hint of orange or yellow around that eye. So that didn't show up well. I'm going to try again. A little yellow. And I'm going to probably have to let it dry and put it in later. Try one more time. A little orange with it. That made it show up. But I think yellow would have looked better. But it wasn't showing up. Now he looks um, almost angry. I'm going to put a little up here too. And the reason that's not working well is the paint is so thick. Try one more time. Go back to the purple or black or whatever color you're using. Put the eye back. And if I can, I take that really tiny, tiny brush and I put just a little dot of white for, um, for the glint of light that hits the eye. Uh, you don't always see that in all the pictures, but I generally try to put that in. It makes things look more alive. Okay, so when you sign it, you're going to want to not put your name here or here. You want to put it up in the picture. Small as you can get it. Practice on a plate. I use paper plates. Practice with a tiny brush and sign your name with a color in the picture. So I have that nice pink, that dark pink. I'm going to put a little more of that here. And it ties into there. And so I could use purple because the eye has purple. I could use this pink. I'm going to go with purple. A little bit of water on the brush. 
pull away, pull the paint away from the pile. Gives you a really small little tip. you enjoyed it hope you learned something hope you'll try it pause the video as you go if you need to you can go back and brighten things up you can add glitter you can add snow you can have fun I hope you have fun with it thank you for joining me and Merry Christmas <laughs>